in a program that is the first of its kind in Canada. Members of the Cowessis First Nation have created a new form of child welfare program. We'll tell you a little bit more how it works. Chief Red Bear Children's Lodge is aiming to keep Indigenous children connected to their culture and community and keep them out of the traditional foster care system. Nicole Cook is the associate CEO, and she joins us this morning. Good morning to you, Nicole. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, and I'm so interested to learn more. This is the first program that's going to make use of Bill C-92. That was a law, to remind everybody, that was passed back in 2019. It hands the jurisdiction of child welfare back to First Nations. And tell us about the program's Chief Bear Children's Lodge, how it will run, how it will operate. Okay, yeah. Um, so basically what we're looking at doing is is probably exactly opposite of what social services has been doing uh, thus far. Uh, basically, we feel like the system might not be working, especially for Indigenous families. Um, so <clears throat> our main focus is going to be on prevention services. And what that means is that we will be uh, providing support to the families before they actually become in, like uh, come into crisis. So we do have a circle of care model for those families that are struggling, which will allow the family to actually decide what their care plan looks like and what they need moving forward. And we're going to be there to support them. Um, we <clears throat> will surround that family with early learning, uh, somebody in early learning, uh, culture, uh, potentially health care, uh, so that they're surrounded by all of the <clears throat> people that they, that they might need um, in order to achieve this. We also um, have, we are, we also have a, a program that we're quite proud of right now. It's called Sacred Wolf Lodge. And with that program, we actually take the whole family into care, and regardless of where the children are, because they might be placed in different foster uh, care. We'll take the whole family together and we will help teach them how to be a family again, how to uh, reinstill the culture uh, in the program, uh, as well as teach them how to live in the world again. So basically helping them with uh, labor skills, uh, we'll help them find housing and then just teach them on budgeting, like all of those little things that sometimes families just need support in. Uh, we've had um, a couple successful families in that program where there's been two uh, moms that have exited the program and they are doing so well in the community right now. Um, another part of the program is we are looking at Nicole? early learning. Oh, yep. Yeah. No, sorry. I just wanted to know how you're hoping that this new model is going to change the system because, you know, we learned about the statistics this year and they're heartbreaking that uh, Indigenous kids make up 7.7 percent of the child population in this country, but they're 52 percent of children that are currently in foster care. So how will this model that you are using change that, change those statistics? Yeah, so... Well, basically, we are hoping to keep the families at home. We have provided in-home supports for some of our families, and we do a lot of prevention services. And that would mean that uh, we, we will help support the family before they become into crisis. So if they're low on food or they're struggling financially, we want to jump in there and support them so that uh, the families... Uh, are are successful so that they don't have to so that the children aren't apprehended. Right, Nicole. I want to thank you so much for coming on this morning. We'll be following the progress of this with great interest and can't wait to connect with you again. Thank you.